all set now. Got my knife for cutting their food up. So it is officially time to get into our nukes, start feeding our pollen patties. These are Man Lake. Uh, I will post a picture of the label so you all can buy them. I swear by these, they're literally amazing. For large scale, they're probably not practical price point wise, but for somebody like me, they are absolutely perfect. So today I'll be feeding the nukes, a couple of the 10 frame hives. As you can see down here, as I explained, the nukes, and I'll check on these patties with you and see how it goes. That one hive right there is just absolutely booming today. You can see them all there. Super excited the sun's out. I use bricks, I also use gloves. You don't have to do either. So I'm just gonna peek the bees. As you can see, my bees are not aggressive. I haven't smoked this hive at all. I don't even have one trying to get at me. Um, I'm just gonna lightly give them a little, just a little smoke, just to let them know that it's all good. Calm them down a little. Um, so you can see this is a 10 frame hive. This is what they mean when they say a 10 frame deep. Though, if you look here, these are deep frames, so they'll come down to about this mark. This is a medium box, or a super. I've put holes in it which have a screen mesh, I'm not sure if you can see that. They have a screen mesh in there to allow airflow out, because your biggest enemy with these, even in the wintertime, is moisture. Bees are cool with airflow, they like it, we just had a crazy storm or three yesterday. So, that's okay. Airflow is great. This is something that I'm testing. I won't swear by it yet, uh, but so far it's been very good results. The bees, of course, are extremely happy. That being said, this is a spacer. This is a spacer. It's something that I made up. I believe it's a three inch that you could have gone, I could have gone two and a half, but it allows me to use my medium boxes as deep boxes when I'm out of deep boxes and rather than me buy both kinds of boxes, I can just use spacers that I've made out of plywood, you can see here. Um, I just bought a box, well, grabbed one of my boxes, measured the length width, and used, I, I believe it was, was five ace board, something like that. Um, it was just normal, real nice plywood, and I painted it. You can dip this stuff in wax. Uh, I only plan to use it for a couple years. Um, maybe a season or two, just until I get enough deep boxes as I'm still a new startup. Uh, that being said, you'll notice these are older boards. I got them from a B company that went out of business. The guy had been using them for years. Some bottoms are from them. The white bottoms are, all the blue bottoms are ones that I started with the business. Um, so yeah, so as you can see, the bees are very friendly. So if you can notice, I can't even tell where their pollen patty used to be. So these guys are more than ready for a new pollen patty. As you can see, their numbers are super heavy in here. Uh, these frames, let me see if I can't wedge it out there. I should have my hive tool. There it is. These frames are not drawn yet. So I this is my foundationless setup that I do. This is a wedge top bar that I've taken the top bar it normally sits like this in the hive. I've rotated it on its side to create a lip. And then I've taken and run fishing string in two of the four holes. And there she goes. So they have not drawn out these far too, but it gives them a ton of space for expansion. They have drawn out these, but the outside ones normally don't get drawn the fastest. This hive was converted from a five frame very recently so I would expect not to see two or three frames fully drawn out at this point. So anyway, let me grab a pollen patty here. I'm just gonna do a little cut, a little cut. This is stuff you don't wanna sit out in the heat too long. It gets real mushy, as you can see, it's kinda of running. I'm just gonna take a, a cut. You wanna keep the wax paper on it. Uh, that allows it to keep moisture. Once the moisture comes out of this, the bees no longer want it. So what we'll do is we'll just sit this down in here, try not to squish any of our friends. And I'm just gonna watch it for a sec. And as you can see, they stick to it pretty quick. At least that guy has. 
Um, but anyway, so there's another one there. They'll have that thing fully covered. So what I'm, what I'm gonna do now, because the bees are all in the top of the box, I'm just gonna give it a, a little, little smoke here just to push them back down so I don't crush any bees. As you can see, all the bees are here. So your solution for that is literally you take it above the hive, make sure you're above the hive. Now this is a top lid, so I know there's no queen in it or anything. You're just gonna give it one quick shake. And you just shake the bees down. And then I'm gonna give them one little puff more, make sure they're gone. We're looking okay shape. So you never just sit a lid down. You always sit it down, bring it close to about bee height, and you wiggle it back and forth like this, real gently. And upon doing that, they all walk out of the way. And just like that, I didn't hear a single crunch. I know all my bees survived. And I'm on to the next hive. So, now we'll dive into one of the five frame nukes. So I'm gonna skip a step, come over. I know they're gonna be hungry. Cut them a little pollen patty here. Little chunk because they are a little high. Five frame nukes are the ones like you see here. You can see the difference between the two. Granted, that's an older hive than this one. Let's go, I believe this is one here. May not be, nope. That's just a spare. I always keep spare frames in the yard. That way if I need them in a pinch, I'll just grab them. It's more foundationless frames. Um, here's one here, I know this is one. I sell all kind of nukes, so I have empty boxes sitting around that are ready for new queens and stuff. Ah, okay, so we've come across the problem with the rain. So what happened is the rain has actually come through this top plastic here. So this is something I haven't come across. So I'm going to get You don't just want to throw this. As you can see, it's dried out. The plastics come off and they don't want it. Well, the wax papers come off, they don't want it. So, and it's gotten nasty. If I was to take that, put it on the ground, uh, hive beetles would nest in that. And they would come back up, fly back up, go in the hive, and they essentially keep the process going. And they attack the hive and they attack your honey and they can actually leave a bad taste in your honey. So you don't ever wanna just pitch that stuff. Most of the time I sit it on top of the hives and then I come back through and pick it all up. So this is a very small hive. This was one that was two frames, I think, a week or two ago. It was, it was not long at all. And as you can see, they're they're not trying to come out at me at any, at any rate. I'm just going to show here. This is all old brew comb. So you can tell these four little filled spots here. You can see how it looks kind of like a a pimple more or less. It's not smooth. It's not huge though either. So I'll show you what huge means as well. So I'm not sure. Let's see, I'll try and get a good angle. Down in these cells, you may be able to see a little white speck. Looks like a mini grain of rice. That is actually a, a egg that has been laid between one and four days. At the four to five day mark, they hatch. So you know that this queen, this queen is viable and laying because she's laid all through here. And you can see the bees are kind of covering some of the brood comb that still has brood in it. Uh, so let me flip it around, but you never want to hold, really hold frames like this. This is just something I'm trying to do because I'm working one-handed to show you all. I do not see our queen. Excuse me. All right. Let's see in here. Oh. I'm bouncing around a little, so I'm just gonna give them just, just a little smoke. You don't ever wanna give them a lot, but just a little to let them know, hey. All right, so I'm gonna do the same process with this one. I haven't found anything weird yet, um, but this is just a larger hive. This is the one that you saw some sped up footage of, of just a ton of bees coming into this hive. Um, this was a nuke also about two or three weeks ago, something like that. Uh, but still, it's it's occupying about eight frames or so right now. One tried to get me there. That's what happens when you don't smoke them first. You should always give them, a, give them a little, just so they know, to calm down that all is good. So, 
Uh, you can see a little remnant right here of their palm patty. That's how it was sitting. So that to this, you can tell that they basically done that in. So I'm gonna take, put a new one here, squish a little bit. Oh, there's a little piece over here too I almost missed. <laughs> they, stay, they think I'm stealing. I mean, I kind of am. That's some more, you can tell it's some old stuff. Um, again, from like last week, but I put in a very, two very large pieces in this hive, so I'm trying not to overdo it. This should have more wrap on it, but I know this is a big hive. I know they'll eat it, so I'm not too worried about it. So again, you just give them a little shake, let them get oriented, and then you slowly ease it in, and you're all good. Can you place your brick back on? That's all she wrote. Mm -hmm.